So first of all, let's talk about the Brandon Lee case. Now, it's it's such a such a complex technical case. This one, the firearm used in the Brandon Lee accident was a 44 Magnum revolver. All right. So now let's have a look at this cartridge here. So this is an actual 44 Magnum case. Uh, excuse the condition of it. It's an old one that I actually picked up on the range, so it was actually fairly corroded. I, I kind of cleaned it up just for this, but. I thought, well, seeing we know we know what exactly what sort of firearm killed Brandon Lee, I'll, I'll show you what it actually looks like. So this is a 44 Magnum case. This is an empty. This is a fired case. So you can see the primer has been dented. I don't know what I've had a look, and I can't I can't find any information that tells me the actual brand. But the, most of them are going to be pretty similar. A common one you're probably aware of, Dirty Harry. You watch the Dirty Harry movies, he carries a Smith & Wesson Model 29 44 Magnum revolver. So it was probably something similar to that. Now what I've got here, this is a Smith & Wesson Model 686 357 Magnum revolver. The 44 Magnum version of this, the Smith & Wesson Model 29 is basically exactly the same just scaled up slightly, probably about 10%, you know, in the size of the cylinder, the size of the frame. Barrel length can vary, and the grips are going to be about the same because they obviously have to grip. So it's basically just this part here would be scaled up. I showed you the size of a 44 Magnum cartridge previously. So the cartridges are loaded into the chamber, chambers of the revolver. Most 44 Magnums are going to be six shot, just like this one is. This is a 357 Magnum, so it's just slightly smaller, but basically the same. Now, on the Brandon Lee movie, uh, The Crow, I think it was called, set, the director wanted a scene where the loaded revolver was pointed straight at the camera. From the perspective of the victim who was facing the revolver. Now, normally I don't I don't point my firearms at cameras when I'm making at the camera when I'm making movies because it just freaks people out. But in this case, I'm going to do it because you need to be able to understand why. I don't have a cameraman. I'm here by myself. There's no one, no one here. Now, when the director wanted that, this this revolver is empty now. There's no cartridges in it. If I point that at the camera. You can probably see, if you look here, you can see the four, the four chambers that are visible are empty. So, you, you, well, you can't see the chamber that's lined up with the barrel, but it's just not good reality because a fully loaded revolver, you're going to be able to see them. So the director of the movie wanted cartridges in the chamber. I only got blank rounds, so there's no danger. So to load a revolver, the cartridges just go into the back like this. Now these are these are um, blank cartridges. Now if we close that, if you look at the camera, and I'm going to check this footage in a second, but if you look at that, you can see the bullets in the in the four chambers that are visible. So in a movie situation, this is a reality like. It shows that the, the, the revolver is loaded and that's what the director wanted in the case of that now, Right, so I've got all my safety gear on because we're going to do an actual test now now There's a cartridge I've prepared the same as the firearms Prop guy in the Brandon Lee movie did he prepared some cartridges with no powder in them a projectile so you could see it at the front but they actually had live primers because I think he probably just got live cartridges and pulled them so what I'm going to do is load this cartridge into the revolver I'm going to fire as must have happened at some stage between it being loaded and Brandon Lee getting shot and we'll see what happens So not much of a noise. Ah, now that's interesting. 
See, what's happened in this case is I can't open the revolver because the bullet has actually, the prime has driven the bullet out of the case, but it hasn't driven it all the way into the barrel enough that I can actually open the cylinder. So the bullet's now halfway between the cylinder, but you have to think about the fact that if the 357 Magnum uses small pistol primers, the 44 Magnum being a much bigger case uses a large pistol primer, a bigger, more powerful primer. So even though the bullet was bigger, it obviously had the power to drive it just that little bit further so that it was just here. So when the, when the next, when it was, the revolver was unloaded and blanks put in, you had a bullet sitting there. So now what I'm going to have to do now is All right, it took a bit of knocking. I had to use a brass rod to knock the projectile back out of the forcing cane into the, into the, back into the case, into the chamber, so that I could actually open the revolver. So I wasn't able to absolutely replicate the conditions of the incident. All right, so I'm showing you the view here with the cylinder open and the hole that goes into the barrel. Now that part there is called the forcing cone. And basically what that does is as the, as the bullet leaves the cylinder and goes into the barrel it aligns the bullet and and starts squashing it down into the rifling of the barrel so i've got another bullet to show you how it goes in so you can see that goes in halfway so that's pretty much probably what happened in my case the primer only just had enough power to push the bullet in sort of that far or, or possibly slightly further so and therefore the cylinder didn't, didn't open and in this case obviously they'd know that there was something wrong but you can see that if that primer had just a little bit more power or the other other variable is the actual design of the revolver itself if you had a revolver with a slightly more open forcing cone which actually allowed the bullet to go all the way in before it actually started meeting the rifling such that it was in far enough that the cylinder would open well then that's that's where the danger would lie because you'd have a bullet sitting in the bore just here as you can imagine if, let's try that as you can imagine if you had a bullet sitting just there cylinder's closed bullets there and you've got a blank cartridge behind it to all intents and purposes you've got a loaded revolver and when it fires the actual end result is going to be absolutely no different to having a normal cartridge in the chamber so brandon lee wasn't killed by bullet fragments he was simply shot by an actual normal bullet out of a gun it just instead of starting in the cartridge it started a little bit further in the start of the barrel but the end result was no different So let's get to how could this be avoided? Well, obviously, the firearms armourer made an error in providing blank cartridges that had primers in them. A blank cartridge should be a blank cartridge, just that. It should have no live components in it at all. So you either have empty, either use fired cases and put a projectile in them, so it's a, a, a blank. Um, or in cases where you might have a case where there might be a close-up of the ammunition being loaded so you don't want to show obvious dents in the back of the, the primer. Primers can be rendered unusable by soak, soaking them in water. So the armourer could soak some primers in water so that they're wet, loaded into the case, it will never fire empty case and cartridge so you'll have a have a cartridge then that looks like a real cartridge it doesn't have a dent in the primer but it's an actual blank the other thing i think is every time especially with a revolver where something or any firearm i mean how do we know that the firearm hasn't been lent up against the wall something's ended up being dropped accidentally into the barrel so you've got a piece of whatever in the barrel and a blank charge is fired 
and whatever's in the barrel is going to come out at supersonic speeds and be, be deadly. So I would suggest if I was an armourer, as I brought a firearm on set, the first thing I would do, firearm is empty, barrel is clear, that's safe. 